Hey, again, it's getting super late. I've been up forever, looking far more healthy than I feel. So we're gonna have to do this even more quickly than the volume one. This is the EOS M3 compact external audio setup with the Rode VideoMic ME. You know it, you love it. Some of you guys are doing awesome stuff with it, even improving upon it and making it better, which is super cool and flattering. If you don't know about the setup yet, go check these videos. So let's go from compact to micro. Now as in volume 1, the integral parts to making these setups work are these cable ties that come with plastic bases that have adhesive tape attached to the back of them. This time I'm using these two, a narrower one with a pointed tip with a clean front and a circle on the back and a broader one with a round tip with four vertical lines on the front and four vertical lines on the back. Once again, this is the compact external audio setup with the Rode VideoMic ME and the Adyateach 004 L adapter. Step number 1, get some 3M dual Lock. In this case, I'm using the low-profile transparent version and apply it to the EOS M3. Don't bother that you're putting this on the Wi-Fi pictogram, Wi-Fi function will still work. Apply some firm pressure so it sticks. Next step is a cable like this. This will connect to the EOS M3 and this will connect to the microphone. This is the Etiteach ETM008 micro directional microphone. It's pretty much a combination of a microphone and a 3.5 millimeter male mic jack. Now get the cable tie, put your little adapter cable in and make sure it sits tight. Then let's remove the cover of the adhesive tape, put some 3M dual lock on the back, apply pressure and then apply it to the EOS M3 like this. Make sure this still opens, put it in like this. And then this is where the mic goes. And then this is how it looks. Now the Etiteach ETM008 comes with both a micro foam windmuff and its own little dead cat. You can cut this right here if you want the cable tie to live with this cable or if you want to undo it without breaking it, cut it around here. Okay, quick audio comparison. This is the EOS M3 internal audio. I'm holding the camera at about selfie distance using the 11-22 STM M lens. Even for internal audio standards, it's not really a good quality and the way the microphones are located on the body, you won't be able to apply micro windmuffs. So if you are Side, in a windy situation you're not gonna get good audio. And now this is what you're getting with the mini directional microphone from Etuteach. The voice is clearer but the most noticeable improvement you will have when you're outside and it's a windy situation. Quick artificial wind noise test with the ETM008 this time having the dead cat on. Now having taken the dead cat off using only the micro foam wind muff. And now pure microphone no kind of wind protection at all. So although it's a pretty tiny dead cat, it does do a good job considering its size. And by the way, the shorter a cable you can find for this kind of setup, the better. Now if you're the proud owner of a Rode Video Micro, use one of the cable ties like these, the smaller ones that have a clean top that are pointed and have the circle on the back. Apply it to the Rode Video Micro like this, take the cover off the adhesive tape, put some 3M dual lock on the back of it and then apply it to the camera. Place it so this tiny lid still opens. Then you can either use the cable that came with the Rode Video Micro itself or go for a shorter version like this. Again, the shorter a cable you can find, the better. Now this is what you're getting from the EOS M3 using the Rode Video Micro. Like the Etiteach ETM008, it is a directional microphone. It's not really a micro setup, but there's still a reason I wanted to put this in the video. Because there's two big advantages to this kind of setup compared to the earlier number one. This time, it really doesn't block the screen one freaking bit. And benefit number two, because it sits on the side and relatively low, you can now use the original Rode Video Micro wind muff without it blocking anything. But the same thing applies as with the Editeach ETM008. If you're in a windy situation, you're gonna be happy that you can use this wind muff. And also with the kit lens, at 18 millimeters, you're still not running into problems with the wind muff showing up on screen. Quick artificial wind noise test with the Roar Video Micro on the EOS M3. No wind protection at all. Using a foam wind muff. And using the original Rode Video Micro Dead Cat. And I almost forgot benefit number three. Of course, if you decide on not using this mic or using another mic, taking it off is now far easier than with the other setup. And of course, you can also put on a custom foam wind muff like this, which does look a little better in my opinion. So, this is the setup if you're using a Rode Video Micro.
Now if you're the proud owner of a Rode VideoMic ME, this is the cable tie you'll have to use. This time the top is round and there's four vertical lines in front and four vertical lines in the back. This mic jack will pass through the third opening in this latch. And it needs to fit like this because later when you apply the adapter, the adapter has to sit correctly. Remove the cover of the adhesive tape apply some 3M dual lock, place it under the camera so this still opens. And now what you'll need is this Rode DRRS to TRS adapter which connects a 4-pole mic to a 3-pole mic input. So this goes on here and this goes in here. Then this is what the setup looks like. Quick audio comparison. This is the EOS M3 internal audio and with this setup, same benefits as with the Rode Video Micro setup apply. You can use dead cats or foam wind muffs which will help you in a windy situation. Even if you do, nothing will block the flip up screen. And if you decide to not use the microphone or use another microphone, you can easily remove it and put it back on whenever you want. Now let's turn on the Rode Video Mic ME and see how good audio quality is then. So this is what you're getting with the Rode Video Mic ME attached to the EOS M3. And as with the Rode Video Micro before it, as you've probably been expecting by now, it is a definite increase in audio quality. Same benefits as with the Rode Video Micro Apply. You can use any kind of foam wind muff or dead cat and it will neither block the flip up screen nor show up on screen except maybe with a 22mm STMM pancake lens. Because it's a pancake lens, you will run into problems with them showing up on screen. But for the 1855 kit lens, the 11 to 22 and the 55 to 200, it's not a problem at all. Now should you not get the exact same cable ties as me, there's two things you can do. You can always apply a layer or two of tape to make the adapters have the right thickness, which will then really secure them to the cable ties. Another trick is to use tiny little rubber bands like these and apply them to where the cable tie will be. Especially this trick will work exceptionally well. So these are pretty versatile external audio setups. You can virtually put these on any kind of camera body as long as it features a mic input. But since these mics are all pretty good, you will pick up autofocus noise if the lens doesn't focus silently. It's the same thing with zoom noise, but then again, zooming usually isn't that much of a problem because especially when you're vlogging, you're not gonna zoom and talk while you zoom. Silently focusing lenses like the STM-M lenses or the STM lenses from Canon will work work far better than like big DSLR lenses with ultrasonic motors or hypersonic motors or whatnot because their autofocus systems are too loud. Bear that in mind when using these setups or building one for yourself. If you liked the video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up. It'd be greatly appreciated. Any kind of comment or feedback is welcome and I'll try to answer as quickly as possible. As always, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching. And since I'm pretty much gonna drop into a coma right after I stop recording, hopefully see you in another video.